My name is Lucas Rubelke, and welcome to Framework Inception. Let's get enterprising. Every app starts as an idea. From, the, from that point of inception, there is no turning back. As we add features and functional enhancements, the application will grow in complexity and continue to increase in complexity until we arrive at the enterprise stage where it gets really interesting. Applications at this level are usually segmented by lines of business with their own unique set of KPIs that must be met and yet the same basic need for self-preservation as stakeholders awkwardly try to coordinate this release at scale. My experience is that this doesn't usually go very well with the same stakeholders standing around watching the release progress, wondering why this deployment isn't going better. A very viable solution to what I feel is a game changer is module federation. I'm not going to address this at the molecular level as Manfred has already done an amazing job. I defer to his genius. But for review, we have a large amount of functional complexity that we can extract into hosted self-contained modules that be, can be independently developed and then consumed back into the main application or any consumer. My goal is not to rehash these points, but rather to introduce you to a few new ideas to consider that will maximize your investments as you start to adopt federated modules into your enterprise applications. A lot of parameters for distributed functionality already exist in the microservices world, and so we can start there. How do we know what modules are even available to us? Well, imagine we have a dashboard, i.e. the consumer and a number of producers in the form of federated modules. How do we signal that these modules are available? Well, I've created a central registry named hashtag ledger that allows us to register modules, and then the consumer can query the ledger for available modules, which can be surfaced to the consumer and ultimately consumed. And we can continue to register new modules for consumption and repeat this process until AI takes over the world and we become consumable modules ourselves. But more on that in a feature breakout session. Perfect segue though into health check. Not only do we need to know what modules are available, but which modules are healthy. So let's imagine a black swan event where all our modules are inexplicably healthy. Well, the universe notices this and there's trouble in paradise. A module goes offline because the ledger is monitoring all hosted modules. We detect this almost immediately, which then marks the offline module is unhealthy. And using WebSockets, we can signal to our consumer that a module is unhealthy and then we can take that offline. Another use case is the ability to dynamically service modules based on the identity of the consumer. For instance, we have a premium consumer who's purchased our high enterprise plan. They get all the modules, but a restricted user may only be served a subset of modules based on their login. Along those lines, split testing is another great application of this. We have two variations of the same module that we want to split test across two or more consumers. Well, we can serve one module to one subset and another module to another subset or vice versa. And now my favorite example, module inception, federated modules inside of federated modules. My friend was telling me an issue that he had with Jira the other day that he noticed a start work in VS Code line item without opting into this feature. I have nothing against Jira and certainly nothing against VS Code, but this was a cloud infrastructure project. And as a result, this was hard, a hard coded and unwanted feature. This could have easily been solved by allowing for the ability to dynamically compose features based on federated module consumption. I imagine it would look like this. You have a dynamic module outlet you can make available in the ledger, which would allow you to assemble features however you please, and then rearrange them at will. Now, let me get you off of this cliffhanger and show you what this looks like. Now, what we have here on the left-hand side is the ledger, and I have a secondary module queued up, as well as a third module that we'll see in just a moment. And you can see these modules are standalone and hosted. And so if I go back to this first tab and I save, you can see that this is now immediately available to the dashboard. I'm going to make this available to the application, and you can see it. Now, if I go back to this tab here, I'm gonna shut down the secondary server. You can see now it fails the health check. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna spin this back up and you'll notice that at some point this is going to turn green. In the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to create this third module that has a module inside of a module. So you can see that the secondary module just went healthy and I'm going to add in this 
third module, this partner module, that when I make this available, it has this outside federated module, and inside of that, it has this primary federated module, which is the same module up here. And so that is the example. If you want to check out the source code for this, you can check it out at this URL here. And please ping me on Twitter at Simpleton. And above all, thank you for your time. I hope you enjoyed this.